So I just started the recording. So just okay. to let everyone know, this is Angela. I work for the town manager's office. And this meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. This is a meeting of the Amherst Public Arts Commission. And at this time, I'd like to recognize the chair, Terry Holt. And take it away, Terry. Thank you so much, Angela. Have a good night. Okay, um, my name is Terry Holt. Welcome to the Amherst Public Arts Commission meeting of November 20, oh, 27th, 2023. Um, I'm gonna read my little intro here, so you're all ready. Uh, in light of the ongoing COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak, then Governor Baker issued an emergency order on March 12th, 2020, allowing public bodies greater flexibility in utilizing technology and the conduct of meetings under the open meeting law. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by clicking on the Zoom link. Um, this recording gets uploaded to the town's YouTube channel promptly after the meeting. Um, I think that's all I need to say. So roll call, we have six of us here. Um, we have lost, no we didn't, well we lost Angela. Um, let's go ahead and move forward. I don't think Robert's going to make it. I don't think he responded to my email, so we'll just move right forward. So we are very happy tonight to have um, Kat Stryker in, uh, in present. So we are going to adjust our agenda a little bit so that we can accommodate her. Um, if that's okay with you, Kat, can I get Catherine or Kat? Yeah, fine. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to share my screen, but I sent you all the materials and we've looked over it um, uh, last month as well, mm -hmm. the For Want of a Nail project. So if you have that in your email, you can take a look at it. And I will also share my screen because that's fun. And there we go. Okay, so do you all see my screen? Yes. Yeah. I'll, Great. Tom, I'll send you an email I've got with this in it for your minutes. Thank you, Jim. Well, all right, great. So, uh, Kat, if you want to start us off and talk to us about your project, we will be our all ears. We're going to follow along here. Okay. Um, well, it all starts actually with the North Amherst Library. Um, I first came to Amherst when I was two, three years old. My dad was a uh, student at UMass, and some of my earliest memories are of actually walking to the library and back. Um, my, I grew up in England, obviously with the accent, uh, but kept a connection with the area and moved back here permanently uh, about 20 years ago. So I've got quite a connection with North Amherst, raised my girl here, and I've always been an amateur historian. I've always been very, very interested in the locality and what has been there in the past. Uh, you know, everywhere I go, I want to know what I'm looking at. So I knew about the old maps of North Amherst just out of curiosity. And I knew that there was an old blacksmith's um, shop behind the library itself. So when I learned that an extension was being built, first I was really happy that the library was going to be uh, brought up into the 21st century. And secondly, I was always kind of looking and curious, what are they excavating? You know, how's it going? What's the progress? And I noticed that uh, they started excavating a bunch of old horseshoes from the site of the Smiths. So uh, naturally I was very curious and uh, wanted to know what right builders were gonna do with them because they seemed to be just piling up on the heaps of spoil. And uh, I knew these were sort of wonderful reminders of a different era and a different way of living. And one that was like deeply connected with the uh, little sort of village center of North Amherst that was sort of part of the development of UMass, the whole history of the town, etc. cetera. And uh, I, I asked and I said, you know, what are you, what are you planning on doing with those horseshoes? And uh, the builders were a little terrified, you know, middle-aged woman marching across the car park asking what they were doing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I reassured them that, you know, no, no, uh, no, no hassle here. Um, <laughs> just wanted to know. So uh, they calmed down a bit and said, well, you know, we're not, had no plans. Um, and I said, please, would you put them to one side? So they did, uh, but they were busy. And I thought, well, <laughs> let me, let me save a few of those. So my arm snaked in under the chain link fence and I pulled out like 12 of the best. 
And uh, I thought, you know, these should go back to the library in some form and to be a, a lovely just reminder to people of um, how people used to live and uh, what used to be there and perhaps uh, an access point for histories that they might not have thought about. So obviously with horses and being a keen horsewoman too, I grew up with horses in a little Devon village after <laughs> Sorry, this is a story of my life to get to the actual point. <laughs> um, but I had my collection of 12 horseshoes and I developed grand ideas for a sculpture that would incorporate the shoes, the original shoes on the site with uh, a, an, a, a, an idea of sort of freedom as well for the horses. So um, it's all sort of generated into for want of a nail, which you see before you. And it's my way of giving back to the town and uh, my connection with the library, plus the love of horses, plus the uh, the amateur historian, local history, that's my bag. And uh, I put together the proposal and uh, chunked it out after going to town of Amherst saying, you know, what's what's happening with these the horseshoes? And they said, oh, Mass Cultural Council have uh, mm -hmm. got a great uh, oh, yeah. cycle coming up. So I applied and they very kindly gave me some money to get started with. And uh, the proposal is for, uh, well, three things, really. The first is a, an exhibition of my findings in the library. So people can see the horseshoes as they are. Um, the second one is a website attached to that that I've been working on as well. Mm -hmm. And the piece that I wanted to talk with you about is the sculpture, because obviously it's going to be public art. Um, there have been a lot of approvals to get to this point. Uh, I had a meeting with uh, Paul Bockelman and Guilford Mooring uh, just to run it past them. Uh, that was in middle of middle of October. Right. And um, they they let me know the process, which uh, would be them taking a look and then referring to to you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Terry, you said I should also speak with the Department of um, Equity and uh, uh, DEI. What is it? Yeah. Yeah, the DEI, the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer yeah, yeah. Walston, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I wrote to her as well, um, but I haven't heard back, unfortunately. Um, but obviously, like I said to Paul and Guildford, I mean, you can't go around whacking up statues in the town. You know, you've got to have a, yeah. a committee and people. Well, Guildford is a, is a great resource. As the head of the DPW, he's going to be, you know, really instrumental in, in making sure the mooring is good and the pedestal and all that. So he's you got to have him there. Well, we I talked to Paul well. a little bit too about it. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I said I said to Guilford, my main concern is to make this statue student proof. <laughs> I was going to say it looks a little pokey on the top, <laughs> a little bit like, oops, um, <laughs> kids don't climb on this. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely not. Um, but but Guilford got pretty pretty enthusiastic about it, and he said he could uh, give us access to uh, the. Um, the town of Amherst quarry mm -hmm. and uh we can meet we meaning Eric uh the Eric um Dennis the blacksmith who I've approached with the idea and Eric and I could choose a suitable plinth which would be a rough natural stone um okay. which is dug into the ground okay. so you know I'm thinking like four students messing around can't move or carry this thing off no it's probably, probably not it. Although we yeah. can tell you what they did to Robert Frost. <laughs> oh, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and those poor ceramic pigs up at, uh, you know, <laughs> at cows. I mean, they've probably got their own OnlyFans page at this point. <laughs> but, um, anyway, so, yeah, Guildford's on board with it. And uh, they, they were very enthusiastic about the idea. And um, I gave them the details of Eric Dennis's uh, proposal because... I met with him. I was looking for a blacksmith who would um, who who would have a sensitivity towards the brief because what I wanted was not just something made out of horseshoes. First of all, the ones that I'd found were very rusty, so they couldn't be used um, for the sculpture. But secondly, it needed to flow. I wanted something that had an artistic expression which mm -hmm. combined um the 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 
the the work the workmanship uh, of a blacksmith a farrier so you could you could see i mean people bend metal which is an incredible skill um the art of the farrier they bend it in a special way to be purposeful and utilitarian what were these purposes for draft horses working in the field etc cetera, etc cetera. so you've got you've got that but it's also an homage to um the horses of amherst because in our age of machines um it's very easy to forget how much we owe uh the horses that were the labor for you know building for transport for everything i mean nothing happened without without horsepower at one stage in our lives um so you know the flowing mane the combination of um horseshoes which are provided by muddy brook drafts yeah and uh, that's another nice, nice nod to um, Hurst and horses. So we got the steel shoes from Muddy Brook, and um, then Eric's inimitable um, styling using forged iron, which you can see in his drawings. Uh, and he's got the flowing mane that I envisioned. And uh, the pedestal is this wonderful sort of curved shape. I love the profile that's come out in the final drawing that he's he's uh, he's come up with. Um, I find it light and free and substantial all at the same time. Um, set in the stone, uh, the finish is going to be a combination of oil and wax. Um, the octopus that you see by Eric Dennis, that was his oil wax finish. That's a privately commissioned sculpture that's been outside in New England weather for 18 months. So it's pretty good. And then at a certain point, it will begin to rust. And I think at that point, it'll have its own charm as well, because nothing is permanent. And, uh, you know, the combination of that with a natural stone will give it a, another look. But hopefully that'll be in sort of 10, 15 years time. And ultimately, you know, the, the sculpture will uh, rust away at some point. Um, and hopefully that'll be much further down the, the line. But uh, that's part of the, the natural process. And by then, you know, people will hopefully have fallen in love with it and uh, associate it with the library and associate it with... North Amherst, and it could spark, you know, dreams and interest of how people worked with metal and how horses were part of our lives back then. So that so far is the plan. Um, obviously, all of this was inspired by the proverb, yeah, for want of a nail, which I'm sure everybody knows. Um, part of the money which uh, came from the Mass Cultural Commission, I said with the website i would bring out a lot of the history so you know early research uh, i've known this picture i've seen it before with uh, the the pat dowd's blacksmith shop as it was um there's a lot of other information out there about uh, blacksmiths around amherst because they were very important to daily life for people so that could be included uh, in the website you know, a little bit of history of um, blacksmiths in Amherst particular, this um, this Lewis J. Spear shop, that's actually where the fire station is in uh, central Amherst. Oh. So that, that isn't the North Amherst one. Um, but you can see the, the, the mules, uh, pack animals, uh, lovely old, lovely old uh, working horse there on the left, all wrapped up in winter blankets. Um, they would have had winter shoes and special studs for traction for working in the fields. Um, and uh, that's a wonderful picture. And then here, this uh, section, David Warner's work, very, very down to earth things, fixing kettles, you know, sharpening edge tools, um, putting together chain. All of this would have been part of the metal working um, uh, shop and the skill set that uh, these people had and uh, there yeah uh, some of the shoes as they were coming out of the ground hmm. <laughs> so early on I reached out to people um, I meet, reached out Mass Cultural Council of course American Farriers Association uh, we all geeked out on horseshoes and the history of them which was great fun uh, and uh, they gave me information about um, some of the types of shoes that I have in the collection. 
And um, I got in touch with District 1, North Amherst. They're putting together the Mill River History Trail at the moment. So a lot of our interests overlap, and I've been to a couple of their meetings. Um, the blacksmith shop they were aware of as well. So that, that's uh, something we'll combine our resources on, and hopefully I can contribute uh, greatly to what they're doing. Joan's library were thrilled to bits. Sharon said, oh, this is wonderful. You know, I, what a great way of presenting history. And um, town of Amherst, Paul thinks the kids are going to absolutely love it. <laughs> White builders were thrilled to bits that I didn't insist on, you know, commissioning a full archaeological dig on their extent car park building you know so they've forgiven me um <laughs> but they've also got a couple of boxes of stuff that they dug up while I was away this summer and um th they gave them to somebody in the town but we're not quite sure where they are hmm. so maybe in future uh, they'll be found again and then I could incorporate any interesting things i was hoping for some edge tools and some nails and some you know more more kind of basic artifacts as well as the horseshoes right. um, so, but uh, the horseshoes that i've got will be will be lovely anyway but perhaps right builders will throw up a few more things and then the museum of our industrial heritage yeah this is a this is a wonderful place up in greenfield and it was founded by my dad, who is an engineer and fascinated with industrial history. So this is all genetic for sure. And um, the blacksmith, Eric Dennis, his shop is in their building. So, you know, his forge is under the Museum of Our Industrial Heritage, right next to the Green River there, oh. which is a rather lovely connection too. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that's that's it so far. So I've been uh, from a personal interest and a love of North Amherst and the library in particular and knowing that I've you know been here for a long time and wanting to do something for the town then it spiraled off into well what's it going to look like and now it's at the stage of letting people who need to know and approve this going forward uh, know about it and uh, get obvious permissions, approvals, input, thoughts, et cetera, et cetera, before the next major phase, which is the fundraising. Okay. Uh, so for the fundraising part, you have, so you have the exhibition, uh, you already got funding to fund the exhibition from the Mass Cultural Council, is that right? Yeah, pretty much. They gave me 940 bucks and um, uh, some of that's been spent already on WD-40 and vinegar to clean these things. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> I've, I've got to come up with a neat display case. Um, I'd like to take a look inside the library to find something that's really copacetic with the extension. Um, so I'll be forking out on a display case um uh, what else yeah and i've made a website the for want of a nail dot info and right now its focus is on letting people know and also for fundraising there's places where people can contribute if they're interested but this is all very much under the radar and i haven't publicized it because i need to get everyone's permissions uh, before i even begin um on this so i made the website huh. oh it's dot info not dot uh -huh. net yeah info.com just dot info oh, so I spent, there you go so i spent money on the domain name um and the website and uh you know it's uh it's a go daddy so it's like 150 bucks for the first year and i'd like it to run for another year so that I mean that's pretty that's that's already probably half of the cultural council grant. Um, for the sculpture, Eric's estimate is between five and a half k and eight and a half k. Initially, we were talking around the sort of four five mark uh, when we were speaking about it, um, which was you know achievable as far as I was concerned. And then he wanted to do something sort of a bit more detailed, a little bit, a little bit bigger, and so on. So the the actual size of it is going to depend on how well I can fundraise. Okay. Um, I would like to 
I would like to really kind of crowdfund this and approach every little business, every resident that I can in not just North Amherst, but Amherst. I reached out to the um, the Chamber of Commerce and they took a look and they said, you know, when I'm ready, they'll put it on blast because- so One I've... second, Kat, I think Dara had a question. I did okay. too. Yeah. Thank you for your charming and very detailed presentation. <laughs> yeah, um, sorry, it went on a bit. <laughs> so I want to ask some uh, for a little more detail. Uh -huh. So uh, are you you're saying that the sculpture as you've commissioned it is going to be between five thousand and eight thousand? Yeah, five and a half to eight and a half is the current five estimate. Five and a half to eight and a half thousand. Okay. Yes. Can I ask a question about that, please? Who is going to pay that? Well, Where is the money coming from? Well, I had this conversation with uh, Paul Bockerman, and he said that the best thing to do would be for me to take on the commissioning and then gift the finished statue to the town of Amherst. So because that means that... you're not looking for money from the town of Amherst? Do I no. understand? That? No, it'll be, it'll be entirely right. on my shoulders for the okay. fundraising. Oh, thank um, you. So the town of Amherst will then, you know, have full control, if you like, over the finished sculpture because it'll be my gift to the town. And then, you know, if you want to paint it, purple and silver then go ahead because it's yours um if you want to kind of really? if it needs to be moved or if it needs to be taken down it rusts out you know any issues it's the towns to um uh, to handle because so are you going to copyright this work of art a copyright um i, I don't think so i mean it, it's going to be eric dennis's creation Obviously, on an extremely detailed brief from me. <laughs> Is um, the picture in the red box the what you're proposing? Uh, what we're looking at now? I'm no. looking at the red box uh, caption, latest sketches, October 2023. Is that what it's going to look like? Uh, okay, yes, yes. Um, Terry, yeah. if you could scroll down so we're on the oh, same... On this website? Sorry. No, I'm not on the website. I'm on the for one of the nail that you sent. Oh, you're on the proposal? Okay, sorry. Yeah, back to the proposal. Oops, uh, we're gonna need a copy of what you're displaying to us, please, if that's- This different. is all, all all on the town website already. Okay, good. Great. Okay, here we are, there, there we are. Latest ske sculpture sketches by Eric Dennis. So there's three of them. The largest one, which says latest sketches, October 23 with a subtitle, that's the current version the two to the right of that were earlier versions um the earliest sketchy ideas that he had so this big one is uh is the, the latest concept and so how is that going to be is that going to be accessible by the public oh absolutely yes um let me ask I, you about um the way I'm the reason I'm asking you that is I'm looking at it and there seem to be a number of sharp edges on it so okay. what you, what's going to, is there going to be any protection from children getting hurt or college students having too much to drink and climbing on it and either hurting themselves or the statue? Yeah. <laughs> I plan to oil the stone. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a serious well, question because the, somebody's hurt on the statue. It could result in a lawsuit against the town, which the town might well win but not after not before paying their lawyers a lot of money so that that's the reason and besides that who wants to see some buddy heard you know, yeah so that's why i'm asking about that yeah i'm absolutely. looking at it and it looks a little like a as a turn you know it looks like it might be something you need to think about these kinds mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no understood um the reason for mounting it on a stone plinth which is quite tall is taking those con safety uh, considerations into the design. So the stone is going to be dug in, so you can't tip it yeah. over, and it's gonna be quite tall and quite steep, even though a natural stone. So think of something like a steep pyramid with rough edges, um, you know, natural stone. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's gonna be out of metal. 
Um, so, what's the exact height of the plinth you're talking about? We would have to select it from what's available in um, Guildford Manning's quarry. And it would be dug down into the ground by about, sort of, say, three foot. Now, I'm it... more interested. I know about the digging down part. I'm more interested in how elevated it would be to incorporate the idea of preserving safety that uh, James asked you about. Yeah, well, it can be, I think you also want it visible too. So maybe a compromise height would be around four and a half to five and a half foot off the ground. So the height of the top of the stone would be like four and a half, five foot. And then you have the sculpture mounted on top of that. Um, that means it would be way out of the reach of younger children. Um, if anyone... College students, yeah, I mean, they could scale it. I mean, you know what college students are like. Um, but there is a, almost a kind of natural protection because of the site. I wanted to site it actually on the place where the blacksmiths was, and that's opposite Cumbies, and it's on Route 63. It's lit 24-7. The police very often stop for coffee throughout the night at Cumbies, opposite the car park, opposite the bus stop, um, by the car park. So anybody, you know, getting up to any high jinks, it's going to be a very visible place. Um, so I did think that that in itself would be a kind of natural defence for it. Um, by the way, let me say it looks beautiful. So. I, I do like the aesthetic appeal of it very much, but when you say it's going to be out of sight at three o'clock in the morning, college students are likely to be up, and I don't know that all that traffic's going to be buzzing around. <laughs> yeah. there's, a there's a legal term for this, and the reason I'm concerned about it, it's a well-known legal problem. It's called attractive nuisance. And oh. if you have an attractive nuisance, you become liable for people who get hurt by your attractive nuisance. Mm. Mm-hmm. So right now, you know, I'm, I'm hearing this proposal for a beautiful work of art that would be wonderful with no detail in it. <coughs> Issues like, well, how much is it going to cost? Do you need a contract for it? Um, how, what's, you, you said that the town's not going to be responsible for anything. So that's very generous of you, I might add. So thank you very much. But it's, uh, and it's going to wear out. So these are the issues that I'm seeing that we need to think about. I'm not saying I'm against it or for it. I'm just saying I, I'm spotting right. issues. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Terry, mm -hmm. what's our next step after hearing the presentation? Questions like these? And yep. Then... So we, we we're bringing this up so that we can all have our questions answered. Um, we have a kind of a due diligence that we have to go through as a commission where we have to make sure there's public comment. We have to run this by uh, other organizations in town. Um, any concerns that we have, we'll talk to Kat about and get answers for. Um, uh, I had a couple that I wanted to bring up, Kat, if you don't mind. Um, uh, the first one is, um, uh, I'm expecting there might be a little pushback on the concept of the horse being the workforce. Possibly we have a, uh, immigrant population that would say, well, you know, <laughs> actually there were some people of color who actually worked with the horses and were farriers, etc. That mm -hmm. might be a thing if you um, center too much attention on the horse, which I think is wonderful. But uh, there might be some pushback from uh, some folks in our town who say, well, we really need to talk about the question of who was doing this work, uh, the humans. Mm -hmm. um, so that might be, uh, and I know that you were talking about uh, this was going to be part of the 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 path the trail i'm sorry i forgot the words um the trail the historic society is doing i can't think of the name of the the, the mill river history trail thank yeah. you and i know that they are incorporating that history in, in as well of the uh, immigrants in that area so that's mm -hmm. something that i was foreseeing that might be some pushback in our town Mm -hmm. um, that's why I asked you to go ahead and talk to somebody with the DEI because they might uh, give you some different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, but as a commission, we would have to have those questions answered and uh, go to the other commissions and committees in town to make sure everyone feels uh, okay with having this represent the town of Amherst. So that, that would be what our job would be. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, um, questions of liability, as James brought up. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else do I have? Yeah, that's the, those are those are my concerns. Um, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. I'm so, I'm really excited about it. Could you? I'm a little new to town. Um, so you talked about the location of this not being on the, not being at the site of the library. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm 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 trying to picture. So I'm as I said, I'm a bit new to town. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen the public library in North Amherst, but is would it be like in front of that building? If you want to click back on the website for want of a nail dot info. Oh, then I get it. Okay, and now scroll down to the very bottom. There you go. There's that picture. Okay. So it's it's going to be just where you see that greenery. Okay. By the car park. In the back. Yeah, where that green. It's no. It's going to be on the um the west side of sixty three. Tiny okay. little place over yeah. like this area over uh -huh. here. Yeah. yeah, you see, yeah. see where the green. greenery is. It's just where your arrow is. Okay, yeah, actually, tiny little actually the old are... photograph, the old photograph will show better. Oh really? Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, let me go back up to that. Hold on. But you're looking at the triangle of land mm -hmm. from the point there. That, there, mm -hmm. the two roads come this together now. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one. Yeah. Okay. Tad, is that is that uh, in fact where it is? It is yes, and where the landscaping has been done, where the car park is, there's actually a little spot which is right next to the uh, the pavement, the sidewalk that goes to the extension. Okay. And uh, it, it's it, it's just this kind of rounded off shape which would be absolutely perfect and it is exactly over the old blacksmith's um shop yeah. too okay it's exciting this is wonderful for you to do all this research and bring it with the background and everything it's greatly greatly appreciated absolutely um have you worked with the amherst historic people at the gym with your your wife and all those folks over there like the folks um i know that there's a some kind of a mandate where if there's physical property found that of a historic nature that 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 the, the Amherst historic is it a society i'm not sure council. Um, they are supposed to take uh, take some of the, the physical property from the library and, and display it, but if it's a document then the library gets to keep it there's some kind of a mandate about that I don't know if you you read about that. Mm. I, I bet I can find out that easily enough. I bet yeah. <laughs> I'm just I went, curious if, if folks have, have talked to you from Amherst History Historical yeah. Society. Yeah, that's the name. I went to the uh, the town offices early on in this process and I said, you know, what what's the what's the protocol? Mm -hmm. Because I have artifacts, um, you know, the right builders uh, collecting them, but I also have, you know, 12 of them. And they said, OK, you know, that's that's fine by us. You know, thank you for telling us. Right. So they were aware of it from very early on. And um, the ones that I have, you know, I consider them the property of the town. They're for everybody. They're not mine or a personal collection. I'm looking after them until they can be displayed. So I did get verbal permission directly from the town about that. Oh, I, I was actually just curious from a historic perspective if they have been able to... Uh, collaborate with you for informational purposes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Who did you talk to at the of Amherst the Historical Society, if I may ask? Say again, Jim. I was just wondering who did, you said you talked to someone from the Amherst Historical Society. I went to the town offices and I spoke with a young chap who, um, oh, I'm blanking on his name. I'm sorry. That's uh, all right. He wasn't part of the society, historical society, but he he was all about, you know, archaeological digs and excavations and things. So he pointed me in the direction of Mass Cultural Council and he said, you know, you've got permission from us to go ahead. So it was run past people. As far as the historical society goes, I haven't actually had that much time to do the research that I'd like to do as the next phase, you know, if the sculpture is approved, that's going to trigger um, a great 
playing in the sand pit of uh, Amherst history. For me. <laughs> uh, so, so am uh, I to understand that on the website, as I've seen it now, that the project supporters have all given you money for all of no. the pieces of this? No, no, no money has changed hands at all. Um, the Muddy Brook Farm, bless them, they've been saving draft horse shoes, which will be incorporated into the sculpture. Um, Jones Library have just been enthusiastic. The Farriers Association have given me historical uh, background on, on shoes. Okay. Um, I, understand. I understand then. So yeah. I think no that... No money supporters, yeah. I think that... If you're on a website that's going to be fundraising, you should be careful about the language that you use and that it isn't indicated that they are giving you money or these people have given you money because it looks as though they are as it is presented right now. Oh, okay. So and what I do you think, think you need to be careful about that. Um, the other question I have is, was there ever any in the course of your many, many, many steps and work that you've already done and put into it. Anybody who suggested coming to talk to this commission previously? Um, it, well, yes, um, I, let me think. The, 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 the steps have been logical ones because I, I knew I would have to approach you, uh, but I was away for a period of uh, several months over summer. So when I got back, I reached out to um, Paul Bockelman in the first instance and just said, hey, listen, Paul, I've got this idea, you know, who do I now need to speak to? Um, so you have been on my mind for a long time, but I thought, well, you know, I've got to go straight to you know, Paul and Guildford first and let them know about it. And then everybody else will, you know, drop into place because, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are other people I haven't approached yet. Um, I just think, it, it, see, it's important. I mean, I think all your work is wonderful and sincere and very serious about the location and history and everything you've reported to us. But there's a precedent that we have to think about in terms of where public art comes from mm -hmm. and how on any kind of resources that we encourage are like a offered to and able to be gotten on an equal basis with every citizen of the town. Mm -hmm. You mean non-discriminatory, I think. That That is a fine way to say it, but I also think that I don't know of any other time this commission has seen a proposal from an individual and have been in the position to, to be supporting or not supporting it if, if we're not being expected to pay for anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly where this is in terms of our involvement in it at all. It's kind of, it is breaking new ground a little bit. Um, we haven't really had private donors come to us to um, propose a public art as, as far as I've read, uh -huh. uh, look back in our history. Um, uh -huh. So this is a little bit new and we're gonna have to talk about it as a commission. We, we are responsible for coming up with the policies of public art in town to make sure that everything is um, representative and meets criteria, um, that the entire town has a say kind of thing. And that's something that's part of our job. Um, but we don't have a explicit, like it's not written down as a policy, but I've talked to Paul about it and we, we will have to sort that out as a commission. Um, but I think so far, I think the work you've done is fantastic. Dara, you have a great, uh, a great couple of points there, especially about the supporters page. That is something you might want to be careful of because it does mm. kind of imply that you've got um, monetary support from all these folks, which I wish you did. That'd be great. But um, I think maybe just kind of instead of project support, you might say... Uh, Enthusiasts. Uh, no. Uh, there's going to be another word, maybe. Maybe the word supporter might be a little bit implied that that there is yeah. financial support for that. So that's, that is that's really good uh, good advice there, Dara. Thank you. So Dara, anybody else want to have more, any anybody yeah, else want to say anything? Yeah, I have a I have a comment on Dara's point because I agree with what you said about precedent. 
But on the other hand, there are a lot of concerns, um, positive and, and, and negative, about a proposal like this. Uh, one thing, there needs to be some kind of a, a document of gift. Mm -hmm. uh, for another thing, uh, somebody needs to be sure that the project isn't going to start and then stop halfway through mm -hmm. because of lack of funding or for any other reason. Um, somebody needs to be responsible that the aesthetic appeal, which looks pretty good to me, but the aesthetic appeal has to be consistent with the town and the town's values and and approval of the quality of the work. And um, so despite the unorthodox um, nature of this proposal, uh, one of which is that the town doesn't have to pay anything for it, and I can't be against that. <laughs> um, I think there is a role for the Public Art Commission to play. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And then the, the, our work is to kind of talk about this and come up with some more questions. And then uh, if it's OK with you, Kat, we'll call you back for another uh, meeting. It's getting a little crazy toward the end of the year. Um, are you is this uh, do you have a time restriction that we need to get back to you? Because we've got a December meeting and then we're into 2024. So is that problematic in any way? Um, I would I would really love to uh, kind of get everybody behind this and approving it because i wouldn't want eric dennis to start working on other commissions for example and then not have the time for this but importantly is uh, to start the fundraising because um i need to be confident that i can pay eric for his work because it's it's going to be like my responsibility to do that right. um so as soon as i know that the town is happy and supportive and approves on the all the different levels that it needs approving, um, then I can go out and start approaching people for their proper, well, their support, okay. uh, financial support. And um, that'll determine the enthusiasm amongst the general public, because if nobody gives me any money for it and they don't buy into the idea, then there can't be a sculpture. Right. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, would, yeah. I would really love to see a written proposal from you. Well, uh, Jim, I have a document from Eric Dennis, which is the commissioning document, and um, I've sent it to Paul for the legal department to take a look at. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm happy to share that with you. And that pretty much outlines uh, the contract, which would be between myself and Eric. And I'm okay. happy to give that to you. Yeah. That's one part of it, but you you talked you have a very broad vision. You've got this beautiful vision of this. It's going to be sitting there. It's going to be reminiscent of the history, and it's going to to the extent that there are things not covered in your commissioning contract. I'd like to see something in writing for a proposal. The first thing that leaps to mind is protection under the copyright law or not, and. So that's a very important point, because if it's protected by copyright, then someone who installs it on public land has certain limitations that uh, in how they treat it. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes relevant to whether it's a good idea to be there. And there's a lot of little details, which I'm a creative person, too. That's my photograph. I've got an exhibition in the town hall right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I... You know, I had to force myself to become friendly with the tail, but mm. the tail mm -hmm. is really important when you're talking about a project that's going to extend into the future and be beautiful for years and then disintegrate or rust, I should say. So, mm. so there's all these considerations that we're, we're talking about in general terms that I think we need to uh, think about specifically. Very true. And, and I'm... And I wanted to know what is your time frame for this, for the projected time frame to, you know, get to the point where you're commissioning the sculpture and installing it. Yeah, in a in a perfect world, um, I could have you and everybody else's go ahead in December, and then I can go out there and secure the major donors who I hope will contribute 
um, but before the end of the year to help maybe make a, a tax deductible contribution using uh, donors uh, department, you know, North Amherst, um, District 1 North Amherst, they said I could use their 501k status, Three. 501c, sorry. Um, and that would put the major fundraising uh, pillars in place by the end of December. Uh, and with that confidence that I could pay him, I could then you know, pull the trigger with Eric Dennis and say, yeah, it's, it's go, a go ahead. He could then focus on um, making it through January, February and March. And then once the ground starts uh, thawing, hopefully, um, <laughs> town of Amherst can put up the plinth <laughs> in say, April springtime for a, a kind of um, a, a, a sort of statue finalizing sometime in spring next year. And that would be absolutely ideal. Um, yeah, yeah, that would be that would be my preference, but obviously there's many other steps before then to take. That is a, a tight deadline for town of Amherst work. Um, mm. I'm uh, the anyway. number of commissions that we need to contact and inviting public comment. Um, I and December being really challenging to get people uh, volunteers <laughs> to uh, to come in and do this due diligence. Um, I'm a little concerned about that timeline. Lori, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Um, well, I think the timeline is a little difficult um, in terms of us being able to meet and. Uh, discuss this and as you say work with whatever other you know town committees that we need to get approval from as well but we can certainly discuss what's possible so we might call a separate meeting for mid-december or early december if well we'll talk about that uh, off off tom off has the uh, let yeah. me if i'll just finish my thought um if we um we may have time to uh to get together in early december or mid december to talk more freely about this and decide what our next steps are but then getting those steps uh everything kind of all our eyes dotted and t's crossed before the end of the year would be a would be a, a big challenge go ahead mm -hmm. dara no tom tom was first okay tom um Yes, my my thought is that if at all possible, it would be good for us to try to figure out, try to decide today what we think we can accomplish in one more meeting. What is what outcome do we want at the okay. end of the next meeting? I don't think we've had enough discussion about all of the elements that are on the table <laughs> for that to happen tonight. I think we need to sit down with our with this proposal and possibly some more materials that Kat can hand uh, if, if you're okay with giving us some more materials and, and go through those and then meet one more time to discuss our questions and problems and then go from there. And that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I guess that's, that's I have one answer. more question for the for the North Amherst Library. Um, I see the Jones Library. So does that include then the North Amherst Library that is on board for this? Uh, yes, yes, I, I approached uh, Jones Library, who are in charge of North Amherst Library. It was Sharon, the director of Jones Library. Mm -hmm. What about the North Amherst people? Uh, the Amherst Library people who run it. Oh, they're, they're part of Jones Library? The same, but yeah. So yeah. what else? Every location has a branch kind of. Uh, yeah. What would be really helpful is to give us something in writing saying with the names and contact information of the people that you're right. saying that support this. That would be enormously mm -hmm. helpful and would support the record and make it very much more persuasive. Mm -hmm. And you could leave those materials with Angela Mills and I can pick them up whenever whenever they arrive and share them with the commission. And then we can all talk about it at a, at a future time to be decided. Um, in December, as early in December as we can all get together. Um, would that work for the commission? Maybe. I'll try. I'll do my best. 
Yeah, I think it, it's almost 7.30 now and we have other items to get to. So if, if, <laughs> if you could make a plan, Terry, that'd yep. be- Yep, great. I, I actually did set this meeting for two hours. So this is, we are in an appropriate time right now. Um, uh, I think uh, if it would be okay with everybody and I could call it for a vote, but I think I'll just talk to you about it. Um, Kat, if you <laughs> can drop off some more documentation as Jim asked with Angela, um, that, when that arrives, Angela will let me know and I'll pick it up um, and I can make copies for my commission and we can send that out and then we can uh, set a set a time to talk. Okay. Um, I'll do a Google doodle. We'll figure out a good date and we'll all get together and talk about it. And it, it, as soon as we can, that's all we can promise at this stage. Okay. Uh, we have to have okay. enough of a quorum to get together to make any decisions, of course. Okay. Um, and then we'll have to figure out what our next steps are as a commission to move toward an approval. Jim? Okay. And I hope that that will include a copy of the commissioning agreement or the latest draft. Absolutely, yes, I will. I will, no problem. And he I like to do his lawyer thing. <laughs> but project notes as well with with uh, you know who I spoke to and the date. Um, That's wonderful. That would be so helpful. Yeah. Okay. But I'm sorry, my battery is about to die. So That's you're cool. Probably, Thank you so much probably... for your time, your your thoroughness, and your excitement. This is a, a joyful project, and we're excited to even. Uh, have it proposed to us and okay. it is a little it is unique and different and that does uh, expect us to bend in ways we haven't yet but that's good for us too yeah well so. I really appreciate your time and hearing me out this evening and uh, whatever happens it was a pleasure talking with you all so thank you very much thank you we appreciate your time too yeah. thanks so much thank Kathy bye-bye bye-bye okay everyone that was exciting <laughs> it's a new thing yeah I haven't done this before very complicated. It's, it's very complicated. And, and it's, I, a, it's it was hard not to make a really bad joke because it's like the carts before the horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah, I mean, I think her enthusiasm and, and her own interest in it is, of course, great. But it's the precedence open a can of worms yeah. for yeah. us. And also, how could all these other people have had so much to do with it and nobody sent anybody to us? Well, I did get, I mean, I did get an email back in um, mm -hmm. late September or October I know, and I, I talked to Paul remember. about it and we did have it on our October meeting um, uh, yeah. proposed, but we didn't have time to go through it. And yeah. then this late November meeting kind of, you know, took a lot of time away from November too. So it's, it's still timing is tricky. It's really hard for us all to get together and chat about this. I, th I think this puts a real um, shines a real light on our need to get our you know mission and rules together. Yes, I absolutely agree. It's really true. Yep. Yeah. I so I so agree with that. Um, like I said, it's gonna it's gonna make us need to bend in ways we haven't before, and I think that is very good for strategic planning and growing. So I'm grateful but for that. Terry, Terry, I don't understand what you're saying when you say it's gonna make us have to bend. We haven't had we haven't encountered this before as public art, as far as I've read. Uh, okay. We don't have existing policies for many things in this commission. If we wanted to give somebody permission to put a mural up, we, we don't have a mural policy. I mean. There's so much that public art hasn't done, and we are supposed to be setting policy. So there's a lot of a lot of work we need to do to get this stuff, so that we can point to this and say this is the process, so that we don't seem to have favorites, you know. Well, and and so that all those other entities that are associated with the town would un understand that you do have policies. Yes. Within. So that the next person who comes up and says, "I want to put a." you know, a hat on, on a caterpillar, you know, here's some money, we, you know, they'll say, well, you, but you did this, you did this horse, I want a hat on a caterpillar. And so, yeah, we have to, we have to figure this out. And that's yeah. a very One small timeline to do a lot of work. And that's a I lot. I don't think it can be done in anywhere close to the timeline. She's no, it's, no it's I think not. her timeline is a bit unrealistic, but I'm, but I love her enthusiasm. I just don't think we can do it. I think we ought to have a policy. I'm sorry. I think we should have a policy about getting things in writing. That was a wonderful sales lady. Yeah. But I didn't see anything that you could uh, really. Well, we well, have this, this feel, documentation that she gave well. us. It's, it's, it's a good start. It's a good start. Um, we need, we I need. would like to move on, though. We do have a, uh, some more, okay. quite a lot to cover. So thank <laughs> you so much for your attention and your great questions.
Um, I think she uh, got an earful. I think she maybe maybe surprised that we actually are going to be doing our due diligence. <laughs> I think it's uh, I think we did a good job there. Okay, so let's move on. I'm going to close this one down and oh. stop my share. Oh, okay, here we are. Well, I like the featured artist you had up there briefly. Well, I'll get, I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it. Don't get too excited. All right, let's. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring this oh, one up. Kidding. I have windows everywhere. I'm going to share this screen. I think, nope, this screen. I love technology. Here we are. Do you all see this? Yes, I will be the minute. All right, I'm going to do, do, do. There we go. Here all we right. are, agenda. Okay, so let's move on down. Um, first of all, approval of October minutes. Did everybody get a chance to take a look at October's minutes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do we have any changes to these meet these? Is this it? Here we are. Do we have any changes or suggestions for changes to this? The minutes, Dara. First part, first line. My name is Barwa Dixon on the commission, not Wire. Yeah. Oh dear, that's a terrible typo. I apologize. See it on my name up there. You would read, yeah, fix the name there. What did I do? Oh my goodness. Then, then all the way down to making it public, I, I don't think that the word nice is a good way to describe a professional document in this case. And I did not, uh, I didn't really, uh, I'm not, I withheld my approval from that. I didn't vote on, on it. So hmm. I think you'd probably say one abstention. So you could say, yeah. Uh, you could say five voted yes. There was one abstention. Yeah. What? What? What are you talking about? Um, or, under remember. under making it public, which I have up right here. Um, oh. If you you want to say the chair drafted a an email, just not in, get rid of nice. Mm -hmm. I and agree then, on uh, that. Uh, when you, when we talk about things that we're voting for, we need to actually not supposed to say nice. I don't know what that was supposed to be, but I don't use the word nice. Um, we need to, um, when we're talk when we vote, we need to have kind of a vote of the numbers. We need to have a record of the numbers. Oh. So we should say the commission approved by a vote of, uh, well, there five were in favor one abstention. Um, so we have that recorded. There were five of us according to this present. Yes. Oh. One, two, three, four, five. One. Yeah. Five to one. Yeah. Five to one vote. Four to one. Four to vote, vote. Four to one vote. <clears throat> okay. Uh, anything else here? Let's see. I wonder what I meant. I meant to figure. It doesn't matter. Can you go I back to the top that. again? Can you go back yep. to the very top again? Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay, we are down here. Any other changes? Okay, uh, Jim, if you'll make those changes and send us another copy, and we will approve these for the next meeting. Uh, you want to approve them subject to those? Um, we can. Um, yeah. Somebody want to make a movement to yep. accept so we'll this? Yeah, I'll, I'll move to accept them. Okay. Vote in favor, say aye. 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 All right, great. Aye. Passes. Fantastic. Just a suggestion, but if you have things like that are typos or minor that you want to send me without sending copies to the rest of the group, and if I if, if you catch me doing something gross like getting your name wrong or something, um, and you send me one, just to me, which doesn't violate the open meeting law. Okay. I'm likely to, on my own, say whoops and fix it and send out the corrected minutes for approval. And that would save us some time the next meeting for the minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Back to our agenda. Okay. Uh, ha. Discussion. Co chair applicants. So uh, as I noted in our last meeting, um, I am in need of a co-chair. I have been, uh, I'm gonna be going back to work. I've got 
a lot on my plate, three kids, etc. Um, I presented that and Tom reached out to me and said that he would be interested in co-chairing for us. So I figured we could kick him out of the room for a few minutes and talk about him, say nice things about him, then bring him back in. Uh, is that okay with you? I think you might kick you out. Yeah, that's fine. Right. I'm gonna kick you out. Okay. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see how I do this. It is a public Need to put you on hold. Is that what I do? All right. I don't know if this is what I do. Hey, wait a minute. He's taking mute. the mist. Oh, I can <laughs> mute you and stop your video, but I can't stop you from hearing, can I? But wait, he's taking the minutes. So if he's going to not be here to take, well, you'll the have to take the minutes for a few minutes. It's okay. Uh, to this out. The public open meeting law. If, <laughs> I'm going to try to put you on hold, and if it doesn't work, I'll bring you right back. Maybe, right. maybe Tom could just tell us why he would like to do this work in about two sentences. That sounds great. Talk to and us, Tom. We could decide <laughs> how to handle the next step. That okay. sounds good. Okay. Um, yeah, make it two sentences. The first one is that uh, I th I think that uh, uh, Terry, as as chair, oh, is no doing an awful lot of work. She she meets with uh, town people, et cetera, et cetera, and so I I think there's there's enough work here to do. Um, so that uh, somebody lending a hand to it would be good. That's sentence number one. <laughs> sentence number two is that, you know, I volunteered for this commission and, you know, that it, it's amounting to an hour, hour and a half, two hours a month of my time. I got a whole lot more time and expected also to be spending a whole lot more time uh, working um on on the business of the commission so i'm i'm very happy and and available being retired to um to do to do that work so that's that's my campaign pitch okay that's great there will be more work coming okay. up thank you if though. you want to kick him out i figured out how to do it uh, okay how do i kick him we have to go into executive session because we're just discussing the personal qualifications of an applicant oh, i was i was just thinking that's the technology that. of it <laughs> you can just check my law and what is the executive committee how's that composed i'm just looking for the button on zoom well, I was he's going to voluntarily have himself from the exec I, let me look at the i didn't know this was coming up um give me a second i have to this is very unusual and i haven't encountered it before so tell you what, what? I, how about we ask tom to go get some water all yeah. right Give us a few minutes, because if I kick you out, I don't want to kick you out of the meeting and have you not be able to get back in. There, okay. I thought there was a thing where I could put you in the waiting room, but I don't know if I have the ability to oh. do that. I don't see it. I don't think we need much time. Yeah, just if you'll just go have some water, we'll go have it. We'll have a little chat. And we'll 30 seconds? Yeah, about 30 seconds, I <laughs> Thank think. Thank you, Tom. Dara, you, that's, I agree. I got it. Jim, are we allowed? I think it sounds great. I'm all for it. I don't know if this is, I don't know yet. Acclimation. Thank the you. trouble is this is going to take me a minute to figure out because this is really different from what I'm used to. Well, do we, well, that's okay. Do we have enough people that, do we have to vote on this? And do we have enough people to vote for we us? Have, we have four people, not including Tom. Well, and then I, I move that we um, accept uh, Tom. Uh, uh, do you not pronounce it, his last name? Morger? Morger. Morger. Mm -hmm. Morger to co-chair with you, Terry, um, the Amherst Public Arts Commission. Okay, got a second? Yes. All right, all, right. all in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, I think that's fantastic, that passes. Um, I'm thrilled, uh, I think Tom is, a, is a, gonna be very helpful and there's a lot of work coming up and I think he's got the time for it and I think that's great. So he'll come back in a minute and we'll give him the good news. Thank you so much. So you can just note that they, we have voted yes and he has been approved as co-chair. Okay, there was no discussion, so there's no problem with the minutes. Yeah, hey. uh, I, will, I will inform Angela when I uh, send her an email later. So we'll I just change the title on the website. Great, that was easy. Thanks, Lori. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm thrilled that he's stepping up. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, I think it is too. I think 
it's very I wish welcome. I could. I, you know, so I'm thrilled that he has the time and um, and the qualifications to do it. Absolutely. Me too. Okay. Wait, Tom, come back. <laughs> So what, what's next? Next is a uh, chair report. Um, I will say I, I talked to Mikey and Mikey has asked if we can find somebody to help her with uh, town gallery exhibits. And uh, I said that I would uh, mention that at this meeting so we can talk about it. Um, she said either have somebody else take it over or else have a co a co-coordinator to help her with it. It has become a lot of work, um, especially the reaching out to to new to artists and finding artists who want to display at town hall has been a lot of work. Yeah. Could this person not be on the commission? Uh, yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah. It does not have to be a person who's on the commission. Uh, we actually, I would like to do a call for volunteers to see if we can get some uh, some more people who do do some of the work of the commission who don't need to be voting members. I'm a very big fan of this idea. I'm sure you can get interns from various places and you can I would love to. A lot of yeah. volunteers. That's something that I would like to, when we, we're doing the strategic planning at some point, when we have, I know this is a bad time of year to even talk about it, but um, I would like to do, as part of our strategic planning, uh, I would like to figure out new ways to find new people to be part of our commission who don't have to be voting members. Okay. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. I talked to Paul about something um along those lines earlier and ah he's back tom yeah, welcome yeah. back congratulations uh, are you welcome back? welcome you are now the the new co-chair of the amherst public art commission we applaud you and are very grateful for your service okay it's unanimous it's it overwhelming and there was no discussion so that didn't even need to that made we'll it easy for the for the minutes we're all there. <laughs> all, there. all you gotta do is say you were you were elected unanimously. That's right. Well done. Thank you. Thank cool. you very much. And I will uh, I will let Angela know. So we will uh, note your new title on the website, and you and I can talk about uh, ways we can work together and collaborate for projects coming coming up. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So moving on to the next thing, I, I was telling uh, the rest the other commissioners that. Mikey is asking for some more help with the coordination of the town hall gallery. She is have she's struggling uh, uh, to keep up with the work of not only reaching out to new artists, but also uh, hanging the art. And uh, if we're going to have uh, artist receptions every other month, um, that is adding more to her her That's work. Um, so if uh, if anybody is so moved to be to be of help. Uh, it wouldn't be a huge job, but it would be really helpful for her to have a co-coordinator. So if you will think about it and we can uh, reach out to Mikey with any questions um, and we can talk about it at the next meeting. Okay. And you also shared that um, the idea of having volunteers who would be helping um, could, could help. Yes. Um, not they wouldn't need to be voting members. Yes, that's part of, and I'll bring that up in the chair report, which I'm going to try to go through um, fast, <laughs> if possible. Great. I respect your time, and I thank you so much for giving us extra time this week. Um, this is a time where we invite public comment, but there isn't anybody here, so I'm going to move along. Um, okay, so my chair report. Um, I have it written in here so we can follow along. Okay. Things that I have done this week. I'm putting this over here. Okay, actually, I'm going to take this off sharing. I don't think you need to see this, right? Okay. I'm going to stop sharing. Or did I already stop sharing? Can you see my screen right now, or just just you? Okay, Not your great. screen. Okay, okay. So, um, poetic dialogue. Uh, I talked to Camille. 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 Uh, Peters and uh, he called me uh, two weeks ago and apologized profusely for ghosting on us. Uh, apparently, his studio had a cave in and had um, um, asbestos and asbestos all over his workplace, and he has uh, a very big loss. And so he is working with a lawyer to uh, try to recover some of his uh, loss. So he has been a little out of out of communication. He apologized profusely. 
Um, I said, of course, no problem. Um, and he told me that he's going to try to be installing Robert Frost on Wednesday. He has oh. to get together with Alan from uh, Public Works to to for the help. And then once he has it installed, he send us a photo and uh, we will uh, move forward with uh, getting him a check. So that's hope it'd be really great if we could get this up by December 1st. I'd be I'd be thrilled. Congratulations. Um, that sounds great. Yeah, it's been a it's been a, a lot of back and forth. Okay, on the Boatwood Garage Gallery. Oh boy. Um, so uh, Paul Bachman and I have been ironing out a couple of the elements in the contract that are not very solo artist friendly. Um, for instance, uh, requiring artists to have workers compensation. Uh, this is something that's not equitable. Uh, it's not fair. It's not level playing field. Yeah. Um, so uh, we talked about it. He talked to Willis Town Lawyer decided that wasn't actually necessary because artists are basically sole proprietors of uh, un uh, businesses that aren't even a business. I can't think of the word. Um, unincorporated it. businesses. They are they are solo artists, and so they do not require workers' compensation. Uh, we also had to finagle the payment plan. Um, instead of giving her a lump sum all at once, which would uh, really mess with her SNAP benefits, um, she asked that she be paid in smaller increments. And um, at first that was problematic. And I think we've ironed that out because again, we need to look at more equitable, equitable ways to work with artists uh, of all economic levels and, and, and et cetera. This is a process that we work with artists and we really do need to work on that. So I was happy to do that work. It took a long time. Um, Paul only sees his lawyer once a week. So we had to kind of go back to the table a number of times and then come back at it. And I got Dominique a new contract on November 14th. And I haven't heard back from her yet. I followed up with her on the 20th and I haven't heard back yet. And I checked again one time this morning. I'm sorry, the first thing this morning, I sent her another email and I gave her a December 1st deadline. I told her if we aren't able to get the contract signed, the project installed and the payment process by the end of the year, we have to relinquish the funds back to Amherst Cultural Council by their dictate. Um, so uh, anything else on this on this project, everything's on hold until we hear back from Dominique. But obviously, um, if that gets ironed out, then I will, uh, I've already reached out to Angela to help create a sign. Uh, I've talked to Guilford Mooring at DPW to prepare it. He'll be preparing the grounds, removing the bench from in front, cleaning up the area outside the gallery and installing the sign. And then if we get to that point, we will plan a reception after that. So that's, that's kind of where we are and that we're waiting for Dominique to get back to us and then we'll move forward as fast as possible to get this done by the end of the year. It is my hope that we can get it done. If we can't, then we're, we're going to have an empty gallery until we get another artist in there. So I'm, I'm hoping that Dominique gets back to me. Um, the Electrify Amherst grant, I filled out the grant paperwork and applied for a $1,700 for the, uh, for the project which will award three $500 honor honorariums to the artists and $200 for artist supplies. Uh, we would need to choose locations for three transformer boxes with the approval of DPW. Um, the Amherst Cultural Council has uh, reached out to us and asked us for some supporting uh, documentation. So I'm going to follow up with a letter of support from the town manager. He's very excited about this project. Uh, we've had it done in the past. Uh, and I'll also have uh, Guilford Mooring send me something in writing uh, saying that he he's a, he's on board with the project. If we are funded, we can put out a call for artists in the spring. Uh, if we're not, we will have to figure out how we'll fund the project, and that's something we can talk about. We have some money uh, in our coffers, and we could also <laughs> uh, reach out to private business, especially businesses where there's a transformer box in front of them, and ask if they want to sponsor a box. So that's something we can also do. Uh, if I if we were going that way and we had boxes in the downtown area, I would work with Gabrielle Gould about that because she works with the downtown businesses and so she would be my liaison for that. Okay, any questions on that so far? Mm -hmm. Am I boring you all the tears? <laughs> um, Terry? Yes. Would, would this be re, um, repainting boxes that have been painted before or this be uh, actually boxes? this would actually be moving forward with doing new boxes new boxes okay yes. yeah 
Uh, and really, there's no guarantee that the boxes we've done in the past will uh, will continue to stay beautiful and lovely. They actually had to move one, and then they had to replace that box. So a, bo a box that was just done in like 2018 is gone. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, actually, we're supposed to be notified about this. And Guilford said, uh, oops, you know, <laughs> we had to replace the box. So um, we may need to think about that when we're writing up these uh, this call for artists and the contract and make sure that it's well known that this really is up to the town to decide how long this box stays on I know as is. We can't really say don't change the box because we have to have transformers, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, okay, uh, moving on. Ah, the James H. Barnhill Gallery reception. I don't know if you've heard of this guy. <laughs> but uh, he's a troublemaker, but, but we like him. I heard he's a two-bit photographer. <laughs> so we have, I uh, shared my screen here. So uh, this is the announcement that uh, Angela has put in, on the website. The lighting of the Merry Maple, and it also includes, hold on here, where, we, where do we go? Where do we go? Oh, here it is. And then we have this lovely ad on our website. There, you, there we are, right there. So uh, December 1st, uh, who's gonna be able to be in attendance? It's after the Mary Maple lighting and uh, a lot of other things going on downtown. It's a perfect day for this. 6.30 to 8.30, we'll have food. Uh, Mikey and I are gonna have some uh, snacks like last time. I'll have the table and our pretty logo and uh, you know, we'll make it look all pretty. Uh, we'll be on hand to answer any questions. I've got the old flyers that we're still using because we haven't made a new flyer, which is fine. Um, so uh, will everybody be able to attend? Yes. Yep. Yay! Dara, yeah. do you think you can make it? I don't think so. Oh, too bad, we'll miss you. So Jim, you gonna make it? Yeah, definitely. All right, well, that's good. Okay. I'm now going to stop sharing and go back to this. Okay. Um, so yeah, join us 6.30 to 8.30 to enjoy the company of your fellow commissioners and town residents to enjoy the photography of James H. Barnhill. Yay. Okay. Um, the next thing on the, on the list here is uh, leadership of Town Hall Gallery. I talked to you all about that already. Uh, anybody interested, please reach out to Mikey for more questions. Um, Co-chair murals, murals. Okay. Um, so we do not have that I can find any policy on what we how we make murals happen. How do we approve murals, uh, how do we instigate getting murals made I, I haven't found anything any policy that says how we do this, so this is something that public art uh, has a mandate to do, which is to help write public policy for public art. And so um, that's something we need to work on, so I met with Gabrielle Gould about this. Um, to talk about it uh, and she uh, first apologized for what happened with our last project we worked with her on and was very apologetic and I let her off the hook and it was, it was a rough time. Um, but she was very excited about collaborating on future mural projects it's something she has been trying to bring to town, but there isn't a policy so she's excited. Um, uh, she also can help with fundraising and she can reach out to property owners who might be interested in offering their property as a canvas. Um, uh, Amherst Public Art, uh, in the short term, I'd like to see us work on this policy. And then in the long term, I'd like to talk about logistics of creating a mural as a community project so that it would have a, uh, an artist, a, 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 um, a street artist, a mural artist as the uh, supervisor and vision uh, for the project, but have community the community be able to take part in the actual painting. So that's something that's uh, builds community and it builds goodwill, and that's something I'm really interested in doing, and our town is interested in doing. So more on that when I talk. I talked about it with with Paul as well, and so that's uh, that's in the works. We've got to talk more about that with our planning. Yes. So. Um... I sent you a link to Beyond Walls. I saw that, yeah. And if you look into it, you'll see that Beyond Walls is a seems to be a Massachusetts nonprofit located in Lynn, Massachusetts. Yep, they make beautiful murals. Well, it's not just murals. They have a whole mandate to help public art commissions, mm -hmm. other people, help them find ways to arrive at policies that they 
can use right. in the work. And I think it'd be a good idea if everybody would just look at their mission statement. Okay. It's kind of how it's called Beyond Walls and just Google yep. Beyond Walls Holyoke yep. or Lincoln or whatever. Anyway, they've helped people in um, Fall River, Lowell, Lynn, Holyoke, Chicopee and other places. And uh, I think it's worth using other people's research and experience to get us kickstarted into creating your <laughs> our own. If it's like other people, sometimes that's good. Oh, you, you don't or, need to reinvent the wheel. This has already been done. I, I agree totally and beyond yeah. wall. It, this has been on my radar for a while. Yeah. Policy is um, out there. We just need to, to take it and make it our own. Jim. Uh, there are some provisions of the Copyright Act, which we need to be aware of if we're going to have murals put on people's buildings. Yes. So I just wanted to flag that as a point. Okay, Lori. Um, I remember at some point in the past, someone had approached us about a mural that exists already that is in disrepair and was asking that if you know about responsibility and the town's responsibility for this for us in this commission to you know care for a mural that needed repair. I don't know what happened to that. I remember I that. I don't know about that. Did I? Was that in one of our? When, I think that the, came up early on when I was first on the commission. So, I think um, that's something we have to think about in terms of our uh, when we discuss the policy, right. because murals, you know, over time do um, fall into disrepair, and and how we handle that. And some are created to be short-term pieces too, like wheat paste mm -hmm. and et cetera. So yeah. we do have to, when we bid out a project, we do need to think about the longevity of it and what the caretaking yeah. look like. And just as we do with our other projects that are public art, we need to find out what the artist's responsibility is for upkeep, if there is one, and what the town will pay to, to, uh, to upkeep. That is all part of the contract writing. So those are really good points. Thank you. Anything else on murals? I'm excited. We have a lot of people in town who want murals. And uh, Gabrielle shared with me uh, a project that she tried to kickstart uh, in downtown. Um, she had uh, funding for it and an artist and uh, community art uh, all set up to for, for help with painting and bring, make it a community project. Um, but then she couldn't get the, the approvals through the town. And so I think um, just like we talked about with this for want of a nail, you know, we need policy. So um, anybody, Dara, if you'd like to look into like getting some of this policy to together from Beyond Walls, if that's something you'd like to, to work on, I would be happy to work on that with you. I'm excited about that too. Yeah, Was there, there, there's a lot of information just easily found. Yeah. So I'll gather some stuff and send it to you. Great. Was okay. there a reason that the other mural project didn't go through? I'm curious. Yes. Uh, the uh, design, the design committee, is it, is there a design committee? I don't know enough about Amherst politics. I believe it was the design committee of Amherst at the time disapproved of it because it was too colorful. It was a caterpillar, like like an Eric Carle caterpillar, very colorful. And it was uh, kind of set up as a paint by number kind of thing. So people of all ages in the community could come and help with painting it. But the design board um, deemed it too colorful and they didn't think it represented the town. So they just did not approve it. So. Who is the design? Count. At the time, I really don't know. That's something that I am, I am, I am not aware of right now. I've got. So we could find out about that. Yes. Too. Yeah, and then again, that would be part of the steps of of creating a mural. So figuring crazy. out who it's we talk to about this. There's a public art commission and a design count. Like, in, I think we need to. Paper. Yeah, I I agree, Dara. I think we need to find out who that is that that um voted on that because yeah. uh, assuming that they would have a vote on, you know, anything then like the, you know, for want of a nail. Right. right. Yeah. Right. So that, that was interesting to me. So with this, again, this is something I don't know. So. No, but that's kind of fascinating how yeah. there can be like a negative, one negative vote that ends a whole vision, which yeah. is real in terms of real life. So it happens. Yeah. yeah Especially in 
towns of this size. You know, you have one committee, one person, even yeah. one zoning person who doesn't like the color blue. I you like know, those <laughs> but you would think that that would have been the public art commission vote. Yeah, you would have thought so. Yeah, yeah. There was something I about a design board, but I, I don't know anything about it. So, yeah, I found oh, it interesting. I about that. Part of our policy project, <laughs> I think, is going to have to be to figure out who, who are the other players lurking around the edges. That's right. Exactly. Still exactly. Exist. exactly. So, yep, and you called it the design council or committee? I uh, I didn't catch from the exact. She just said the design. You know, I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> I really don't know. I can look it up too. Don't don't. Yeah, I don't know the design board. Is that was that it? I'll call it that and then talk to the people. Design on. review board. I think that's it. <laughs> um, I'm looking at it now. It's uh their overview is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources. So I think that they deemed it too youthful um, and uh, not representing oh the older uh, residents in Amherst kind of thing. Anti-children. Yeah. I mean, so I they would so <laughs> presumably they would need to also approve this uh, for want of a nail. Absolutely. Well, that's a great question. I, I really don't know uh, if this came from the the BID. You know, they might have a different different criteria, different different systems. I, I have no idea. I I want consistency in this town, right? We all want consistency. We want to know what the policies are, and so that we can all follow them. You know. So the BID could end a, a public art project. Uh, the I BID, don't think though, they could. They're they're the, they're a business entity. Yeah. But, but the design board as part of is is a town board okay. well i'm yeah. assuming yeah that's what i'm curious about because i'm assuming they were wanting to they had someone who was willing to have a mural on the outside of their you know yes. building uh, and that's some, gabrielle's you know, job she's the one who private works the private property. owner and right. then you go to the town to get uh you know design board has to approve that you know they can do this to this building and right. then they say no yeah. Yeah. So that's going to have to be one of the steps that we follow as well when we when we just come up with murals, you know. We'll have to go well, before maybe the that the, maybe the design board and this commission need to talk to each other. Yeah, I think absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 You think so? Yeah. I think it's a great idea. So we'll put that on our how, how to make a mural list. <laughs> talk <laughs> to the design board, get to know them, see what 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 they're all about. Yeah. All right. Good questions, guys. Um, the last thing on my list, I think, yes, is uh, I have had a conversation with Paul about strategic reorganizing. Um, and this is a discussion I brought up a few months, a few months ago when I, uh, I had some ideas regarding reorganizing the structure of Amherst Public Art to involve more voices from our community. I feel like we are too, um, oh, I lost the word. Uh, Small, no uh, not diverse, it? not diverse, but we're also not talking outside of ourselves. What is the word? Uh, I lost it. Siloed. Or insular. Siloed, insular. I feel like Amherst Public Art is very siloed, very insular, and I would like to find a way to involve more voices from our community. So this morning I shared with him some details on how Arlington evolved. I've worked with Arlington for four years in their arts, uh, arts and culture. And uh, they have they came up with a structure of commissioners that represent different interests around town. They have a school council member, a town planner, a member from the business sector, a member from the uh, public library. Um, and uh, those people are actual members of the art commission. Um, and so they are town employees that have a say. And so they bring more voices uh, into public into art. And I feel like that would be a great way for us to have more diverse voices. Uh, as well as having appointments from our from our town manager uh, so i brought that up before paul he was excited about that idea and he's asked me to work on a proposal to bring before the town council in january or february um, identifying others in town that we think might be interested in joining this effort so um this is a we're in the baby stages of this reorganizing but it's something that paul is interested in doing and that would be probably joining the amherst cultural council with the amherst public art uh, possibly uh, some others, just to kind of have one unified um, organization that has uh, the similar missions. Um, so that's something that uh, 
we've just begun talking about. And that will go back to our strategic planning when we when we finally get to that. Yeah, that can, part of that. can we see notes about that as it develops? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I will send you. Um, I think it won't violate any public law to send you the emails or at least the text from the emails and conversations I've had with Paul so that we can all be on the same page. Um, and I'd really exactly. like to hear your feedback and we'll have conversations about it in future meetings. I just wanted to kind of put it out there and put it before Paul. Yes, Jim. As the resident pain in the neck, if you do that and then you discuss them, they have become a public record and they have to be attached to the minutes. And if I were the sender of an email, I would want to um, know in advance that was going to happen and agree to it. Right. I've told Paul that any conversations we have, I would share with with the commission, of course. So, so you know that's going to be attached to our minutes and put up on the website. Probably. Well, you can would ask. Be, would I can ask. Sufficient? Right? Would it be Sorry? sufficient for, for Terry to just summarize at some point, rather than rather than quote the? Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of just did. So I think that yeah. is that is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Summarize it and then you discuss. You know, you do that orally, or if you do it in writing, then they attach the writing to the minutes. That works great, yeah. and then you don't have to worry about this problem, which right. may well not be a problem. But I like to make sure I'm not. If I can, not irritating other people or even unintentionally or in any way. I think the stage that we're at is just a informal conversation about, right. and I think by giving a summary of that should be okay. But any future things that we do that would be written down, we will have to follow, of course, the, the mandate from the you know, public. Well, the, the difference public. between what you said first and now is that you were going to use a document in the discussion of it in a in a meeting of the Public Art Commission, and the minute you use a document in a meeting, it has to be attached to the minutes. Right. So I think I will not do that in this case, but okay. in the future conversations we have on this subject, I will make sure that that's uh, okay with Paul before I put anything in a document that I'll share with you. Does that work? Yeah, yeah that works. I think that's great. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, any other questions about anything that I've brought on with my chair report? Just make the, the comment on the reorganization that, you know, they're kind of, it, it, it is inevitably going to move in two directions. One is uh, what you've presented here, the, the uh, exp expansion of participants and the engagement, et cetera. The other, which I predict is going to be quite difficult is going to be the boundary work with some of the other groups that we've mentioned mm -hmm. even this evening yep. you know um as if if we're going to it's one thing to reorganize ourselves but it's another thing to reorganize the the you know out beyond our strict boundaries right and i think i think we're in urgent need of of that too right have you all read a book called the chimp paradox no well it's a great book it's it's kind of it sounds like fake psychology but it really isn't and it's based upon the territorial nature of human beings mm -hmm. yeah how they will defend their territory if they perceive it to be attacked like a gorilla or right. a monkey who wants mm -hmm. to keep the bananas for themselves mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, Dar Dara's question earlier this evening about, you know, why did we seem to be a bit of, I'm putting words in her mouth, but paraphrased to say, why did we come into this kind of late? Right. Um, yeah. It's like, you know, are we on anybody else's radar? Right. Um, are we significant enough in their view or are they confused about what our role is? People are confused. Yeah. yeah. And one of they our get very confused is, with the with the cultural council. They don't know which one to go yeah. to. And well, we when we were at the block party, um, not a single person said, "Oh, you're the public art right. group." Everybody There's very little like, recognition. Oh, hey, that's yeah. nice. Right. Well, I think one of the problems is we don't have a budget, and if we merge with the Amherst yeah. Cultural Council, doesn't that get solved? They're the they're the bananas. That's right. Right. And yep. so if you don't have any money, people don't take you seriously, unfortunately. Right. 
It's kind of true. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I would like to have a budget. That's that's kind of what, what I'm moving toward, Jim, is is this whole reorganizing strategic planning so that we can finally get on the board and ask for a budget. <laughs> yeah. That's that's my plan. <laughs> Give us well, money. Let's, let's make sure that Paul finds out soon enough and diplomatically enough about what he might be getting into by by expressing his uh, support for reorganization. I was I was brazen in my convert my first conversation with him. I said this is my my ambitious plan, and he did not run away. Okay. Good, <laughs> so good for you, Perry. Good for he you. He listened, and then he came. He came to uh, actually. I think Jim was there at the artist reception. Uh, uh, at the artist reception uh, last month, he came up to uh, a couple of us, and Mikey was there, and said, "Hey, what do you think about it? What if we, you know, what if I put together our Amherst Cultural Council and Amherst Public Art? What do you think about that idea?" And I'm like, "Huh, that came from me." <laughs> I mean, but we all, we all said, "Yeah, that sounds like a great idea, Paul." So, um, yeah, I, I I think he's excited about the idea. It would raise a lot of, it would be a lot of work, you know, a lot of conversations, a lot of policy writing, but it's I think it'd be exciting. All right, we've had a uh, productive meeting. Does anybody have any other business we did not uh, expect they want to talk about today? Well, I made this meeting 6.30 to 8.30 just in case, because I knew that that, for want of a nail, was going to take some time. Yeah. Um, so I, I appreciate your being here longer, and uh, we're at an hour and 40 minutes now, so thank you very much. Um, if we oh, are yes. done... So I apologize for having really feeling pretty bad. And I, hope I can't believe you stuck in there, Jim. Thank you. Because it, it seemed pretty important. You didn't well, feel please. good. I'm, I'm glad you're yeah, here. Thank you. We'll feel better soon. Thank you. Yeah, get better. You got to get better by Friday. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I guess um, I have one, one question would be for when we're meeting next and, and to try to wrap up, um, which I don't think is going to be simple at all, this uh, how to respond to the um, for want of a nail. Yeah, um, uh, when... so I think she needs to give us some documentation. And once she drops something off with Angela, then we can we can get it and disperse it to the rest of the commission. Mm -hmm. um, until I can go ahead and send out a, a Google Doodle and figure out a good time for all of us to meet. And I'll just put dates starting this week going up until mid-December past that it's tricky for anybody to me because we've got a ton of holidays and kids milling around so and you know vacations and people traveling well, yeah um, so we'll just see I if don't we can see get together being able to respond by the end of December I and I think there there's some uh, yeah just there's yeah. Some very serious dive into it but I think there's some I, I love the idea but I think there's some real complicated things for us to be able to approve it that set precedents that I don't think we can do yeah i think the time frame i think is just really hard well i don't want to feel like i've been steamrolled right yeah plus plus i um, one we have nothing in writing which bothered me immensely and the other thing is i spotted like two or three potential really serious issues and this as did you all right and you know i don't think i suspect i shouldn't say that I suspect whatever we get from her is not going to address all of the various things that could come up. Which is why you have to find outside and you know outside organizations yeah, actually, to you know make sure you get their approval. The issues that comes up is that when a citizen offers to pay for everything, it doesn't give them the right to decide what the what the thing is. Right. right. Or the schedule. Yeah, we've got we've got concerns. Yeah, that's generosity is beautiful, but it has it to be tempered with thoughtfulness about realities in terms of public things. You're right. absolutely right, Dara. I agree 100. percent You need and, and it is as if where she's offering a work of art that she would because she's almost offering like here's a finished thing, and we're going to and she's going to donate it to the town, and then we're responsible for this. Yes. Which, that's and and, that's and so there's this whole idea of do, what we're what what how do we what do we accept what do we not accept and and, and public art I don't think this really fits in with public art. This is really tricky, but yeah. it's on public property. Yeah. It is, but in terms of how public, how what our criteria would be for how we decide 
what oh, we okay. place in, as public art. It just okay. doesn't fit, yeah. right? I mean, it's it's not going out for, you know, it's not going out for various artists to. There's been no call to the public. No, no call. call. Right. There's right. no call. There's, There's no, no public no call. It's a, for anybody else to to do it. Right. The other thing that bothers me immensely, frankly, is that someday it's going to rust and it's going to be have to be removed. And then yes. how is that going? To... Yeah. So we have concerns. We already have concerns before we even get any like, paperwork. Yeah. Uh, and again, I love the generosity of it. I love the artistry of it. It's very thoughtful, but um, but we have concerns. So uh, I'm gonna. We're going to wait and see what she can get I us guess, and we'll send yeah, out Yeah, one more quick question on it. If if the library decided they wanted to do it and they did it, would we have to approve? Well, there is no have to. I oh, mean, it's, to, you yeah. know, just like the design well, board, they need our approval the in order to do it. Or could the library just put that up? To me, I'm uh, given I don't how believe, public... Because it's on public property, it would have to go through a vetting system. It would have to go through us and then to the, to the town manager. Well, I think that something went up at the Jones Library that didn't come through here. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. And something there. went up in the in the Kendrick part that didn't come through here. Yeah, there's that's a just, lot that's gone up. There's a lot of inconsistency, and that's what I'm really curious. And being new to town, um, I'm curious about that. You know, and well, where do we draw better, the line? I think it better be a good idea to have the this commission spend some time thinking about the issues that are being brought up by all these questions before you merge with the cultural council. Oh yeah, absolutely. Already has a lot of issues that they have to do, you know. But, right. And they, yeah. because they have money, like Jim said, they have to have policies that are clearer than this body. Right, but us being a bigger organization with more involvement from town officials, they would have to listen to our voice more so that on policy, that, that nobody would has to be listen to us. That the rule, <laughs> rule you have to follow. The, the rule I've learned is being a lawyer is nobody has to listen to me. Yeah, I, no one I has think, to. Yeah, I think the uh, the, qu in. the quality of the questions that we ask in the next couple of months will have a lot to do with persuading people that they should listen to us. I, I take Jim's point entirely. Nobody yeah. has to, right? But uh, if if we if if we start making a little ruckus, which we're proposing to do from our quarter, I think we'd be we'd be getting off on the right foot if we raise some enough questions so that everybody from the town manager on through the other organizations say, "Oh, yeah, we didn't think of that. Right. Good thing we had public art. We'll, you know, let's hear some more." Right. What we need to do is come across as being helpful. Yeah. Distinguish from yeah. you know what. There you go. Yeah, I yeah. don't want to just be a roadblock. I want to be yep. helpful and setting yep. Yep. and setting yep. setting up how we do this in this town. Yeah. And for me, I mean, I, even though I've lived here a long time, I don't really know which things in town are, you know, which things belong to, you know, we're we're the purview of the public art mm. commission, and what is up that is not right and right. so that to me I, I don't have the answer to that question I, I guess it will take some research I don't know if there's someone in in town in the town that, uh, Angela that Mills has a lot of information on that kind of thing she's very helpful there okay um, and the fact we is we don't have a lot of uh legacy of information on this commission you know we don't have long-standing members so uh, we don't yeah. we have to find those answers ourselves and that's the we thing we need a list of sacred cows <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay well i'm sorry to bring all of that up no but I think no don't be sorry yeah. ever no thank you so much for the thoughtful conversation everybody okay uh, i'll be sending out a google doodle as soon as i can to try to get a next meeting to do our due diligence okay so thank you, thank you so much for your time have a great couple of days until i talk to you soon Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Oh, I should be saying we should uh, do the whole move to move to adjourn. Oh. I call to adjourn. <laughs> Is there a second? second. <laughs> we, all, we all agree. I have a vote. Do you go to go to that? We need a vote. Aye. 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 <laughs> all right. So moved. Thank you so much. Thank everybody. you. Good night. Good night. Good night.